Every action thriller franchise and anime is peppered with super stylish and mysterious characters. But what makes Hector Doyle even more mysterious is his distinction as the walking killing machine in the Baki series. He might be human, but his physiology is centered around only one goal, to kill his targets. He is infamously regarded in the Baki canon as the ultimate living weapon. He usually uses his heightened senses to tamper with his opponent's bodies and this makes him the living embodiment of a weapon. If weapons could have a sentient body that can manipulate the senses to attack in seriously damaging ways, then Hector Doyle would be the perfect blueprint for it. While his fighting strategy is borderline blitzkrieg, it's Doyle's merciless use of his body as a weapon that can strike fear in the hearts of the worst fighters in the Baki canon. Today we're taking a closer look at Hector Doyle's physiology to understand the nuances of his physical body and how these unique kinks make him more lethal than any other fighter. Who is Hector Doyle? Why was he in prison? Enigmatic characters always form an interesting trope in the storylines of action-led franchises. The basic charm of these characters come from a mystery that surrounds their abilities and their background stories. Well, a series like Baki has its own set of enigmatic characters that outmatch each other. Most prominent amongst them are the most evil death row convicts. Wanting to taste defeat, these hardened criminals belong to the underworld and wear their killing streak with pride. Killing for these fighters in Baki is all always a do-or-die situation. They just enjoy defeating their enemies but also seek it as a gratification for their life. A mission. A goal. And that's Hector Doyle's mission in the Baki series. His abilities and supercharged sensory faculties are on par with the superhero. He is broken, has an animalistic killing instinct, and yet has a compassionate or human side to him. Hector Doyle is a cold-hearted assassin. As for his country of origin, Doyle once referred to Ardberg Scotch being the drink of his home country. Hector Doyle is of either Scottish or English in descent and one of their most ruthless and most wanted assassins. Doyle was possibly charged with multiple counts of assassinations and murders and he was subsequently jailed in the Caglius prison. He was on the death row until his fateful electrocution and eventual escape from the maximum security Caglius prison. Hector Doyle may be a gun for hire assassin with the least amount of allegiance to any major organized crime syndicate all over the world. Doyle by far has to be the most dangerous assassin turned fighter in the Baki canon. His unique physiology allows him to hide in plain sight and also senses the movements of his victims and enemies easily. For all his unique physiological differences and heightened sensory faculties, Hector Doyle can also manipulate his body to improvise with his fighting methods whatever the fight demands. Hector Doyle can deliver it. This manipulation of his physical properties adds an enigma that is too hard to ignore in the Baki series. We get the first proof of this physiological marvel with the introduction of Hector Doyle's character. Let's understand the first remarkable use of Doyle's physiology through his electrocution death sentence process in his prison. How did Hector Doyle survive electrocution? How durable is his physical body? Hector Doyle is introduced as a death row convict with multiple charges put on his rap sheet. Even though the series never divulges the gravity of these charges, it is safe to assume that they involve his heinous crimes as a dreaded assassin. While he is on his way to meet his end, death fails to claim his life with the electrocution chair. This is a pivotal moment in the introduction and also sets the tone for his character under right note. He is to be executed with a standard electrocution procedure in the warden of the prison assumes that Hector would die just like any other criminal that is given his shocking death sentence. Pun intended. Instead of killing Hector, the electrocution fails to act on his body. It establishes the fact that his endurance and durability cannot be characterized as something normal or human. Electrocutions have a standard time limit to pass electricity through a convict and then the pulse is checked. Usually this process delivers death precisely as planned, but we are dealing with Hector Doyle here guys and his extreme physical durability and gifted senses can also manipulate electrical energy to withstand lethal levels of currents passing through his body. With the electrocution procedure, Hector Doyle had the electricity passed down his body from the crown of his head. In slang terms, this is called cooking the brain, as the right amount of electricity can sort or fry the brain's electric nerve network. This induces a lethal seizure in the convict's body. In the end, you're nothing but a dead body that has taken way too much electrical input. This is where Hector Doyle and his physiology stands out, unlike the usual prisoners. Once the standard electrocution duration comes to an end, Doyle is presumed dead by the warden. However, there is a very important turn of events that occurs 
occurs here. He proceeds to coldly smash the heads of two prison guards standing beside him like the procedure requires. He tells the warden that if the operator had switched off the electricity 10 more seconds earlier, then it would fulfill his death wish. This is a really cold line coming from a convict who just survived a death row electrocution, simply because it reveals a lot about Hector Doyle's physiology. Is Doyle so strong that his body can turn something as lethal as electricity as his strength to bounce back? Can he manipulate his senses to alter his body's durability and turn a deadly situation into a win? Or was he always planning his escape to happen after the duration of his execution? Was he using this electrocution to supercharge his body? The evidence is clear as day. After surviving the electrocution, Doyle proceeds to swiftly kill the two prison guards and the warden moves in to make his escape. It is important to note here that he does not waste his time by slowly killing his victims, except for the threatening, I dare you to attack me small talk with the warden. Doyle keeps everyone's killing quick and effective. What's beside the point is the fact that after his escape, he travels to Tokyo on a plane pre-hired and waiting for him at the exact location that he had planned for it. All of these point to the fact that Hector Doyle had been planning his escape by preparing his body to withstand the assault of an electrocution. Doyle's dexterity with his escape plans also makes a good show of his speed to make the right move that matters. Right from smashing the faces of the two guards behind him, to slam punch smashing the warden's face, Doyle did not even let his victims flinch at a fear of an assassin who just survived a major electrocution death sentence. If we take a closer look at his first conflict with Baki in the classroom, the evidence of his speed is as clear as daylight. He interrupts Baki in his classroom and practically reaches this classroom from the ground. A multi-story axe is done without even batting an eye or really making a huge effort with this jump up the levels. Does Hector Doyle have weapons hidden in his body? How does he activate them? So now that we've already established the fact that Hector Doyle has a highly durable body, let's take a look at how effectively he can use it to inflict maximum damage on his opponents. While the Baki series is no stranger to the use of weapons, Doyle becomes the living weapon because his weapons are also a part of his body. Some of his most notorious weapons apart from his chest bomb are the blades connected to his body. They hide in plain sight and are connected to his joints that can be activated with a mechanism that is is embedded in his fingers through a spring system. Imagine a humanoid-like killing machine. His physiology comes pretty close to this analogy. It is one of the reasons why this assassin is considered the living weapon in Baki. He can activate these bladed weapons in his joints with the use of a spring mechanism, and you won't even see these blades shot towards you. This mechanism works completely in sync with his body and allows Hector Doyle to launch a bladed attack from any distance. A major characteristic of his fighting strategy involves the use of shock value and unexpected improvs in his fighting moves. He is a trained assassin and it only makes sense that he can improvise with almost anything, from bladed weapons to his own body. He is like a shape-shifting ace murderer hiding in plain sight. The evidence for this comes with his disguise as a nurse when he ambushes the troublemaking Arizona State Special Jailer named Biscuit Olivia. Hector Doyle's physiology is perfectly molded and trained to take on any strategy an assassin can take up for the job. He also improves any move at the spur of the moment. It is also important to note that apart from the chest bomb, Hector Doyle also has a generator in his heart that works like a power boosting machine. It can recharge Doyle's strength in the fight if he feels like activating it. His spring-loaded arm shootout can be activated by a switch located in his ring finger. It can help him launch a super speed punch against his enemies. Usually, the victims of this bullet speed mechanical punch are grievously disfigured. It disorients them like they have been smashed by a pillar of stone. Apart from the strongest characters of Baki, it is highly Highly unlikely that an average Joe can survive Hector Doyle's mechanical punch out. The strength required for this heavy and fast punch is safe to say the least of his concerns. The guy can literally walk off from a suicidal chest bomb explosion. So a maxed out mechanical punch is not really a thing to worry about for Doyle. So let's understand next how exactly the chest bomb becomes Hector Doyle's trump card. What is Hector Doyle's trump card? How is his nervous system involved in it? While the mid-fight chest explosion by Hector Doyle works as a good shock value attempt, it has serious ramifications on the fight and his opponents as well. Many highly honorable fighters in Baki like Jerry Strider consider this technique to be a dirty and unworthy ability to use in a hand-to-hand -hand combat martial arts fight. But how exactly does his chest bomb work? Is it compatible with his physiology? Most importantly, how does he activate this technique to burn his potential opponents? 
Well, let's just say that Hector has mastered the use of his nerves and his nervous system to help his body do just about anything, even withstand a bomb explosion. This skill of using a chest bomb is perhaps the most lethal ability that any Baki fighter can possess. Yet it all boils down to his unique physiology. It won't be doable for other Baki characters simply because he has trained his body to be highly sensitive and responsive to any stimuli. Doyle's chest bomb can be activated with the use of his nerves via his nervous system if any opponent is close to its blast radius. Secondly, it can also be activated by just a touch in Doyle's chest. So if you make the mistake of touching his chest, then everyone in the arena will see you being blown up to high heaven. The madness behind Hector Doyle's twisted chest bomb methods doesn't end here. He can explode his chest bomb and still walk off alive. This only proves how durable Doyle's body can be and the dexterity of his physiology allows him to activate this bomb regardless of whether you touch it or not. All you need to be is unlucky and closer to him. You won't definitely survive this suicide bombing on steroids, but you can trust Doyle to walk out of the arena with a cold smirk on his face. So, it's better to keep your distance from him at all times. Why does Hector Doyle allow himself to be beaten by Biscuit Olivia and Yanagi? Hector Doyle's fighting potential is close to being unparalleled when you compare it to other convicts in the Baki universe. He has the prospects to grow better than others like Speck and Kaio Dorian simply because his ruthlessness and physiology allow him to take any fight to its end. Yet, despite the chest bomb and an arsenal of hidden weapons and punches, Doyle holds back from realizing his potential. He even ends up getting blinded by Yanagi's poison hand and barely resists Biscuit Olivia. Olivia's attempt to break his back. Olivia finds Doyle in his exile and he just accepts his fate as Olivia breaks his back with a bear hug. Well, how does this downfall explain the ruthless potential that is wasted by this chest bomb wielding and dojo bombing assassin? The living weapon of the Baki series. Let's take a closer look at the turn of events and how they prove that Hector Doyle chose to evolve out of a violent life and considered his final moments in exile as a blessing rather than a curse. While he is an out-and-out -out assassin with a chest and heart of steel. It is precisely becomes the focal point of his character in the Baki series. It is famously stated amongst fans that Hector Doyle is perhaps the kindest and best of all the others most evil death row convicts participating in the Baki series. This has a lot of evidence peppered throughout the series right from the introduction of Doyle. We can see that he keeps the deaths of the prison guards very swift and secondly, he also doesn't harm the operator who was in charge of administering the electricity during his execution. These actions of Doyle foreshadowed the change of heart he will eventually have after his bro moment face off with Kaio Retsu. All five most evil death row convicts came to Tokyo looking for a fight that will lead them to find defeat eventually. Doyle's code of honor in fights is murky at best. His use of the chest bomb against opponents doesn't sit well with a Chinese martial artist Retsu. Retsu and Doyle meet by accident and believe in the whole idea of synchronicity as it is proposed by Tokugawa. They believe that they weren't supposed to meet by chance and it was fate that wanted them to fight and settle their score forever. However, this fight doesn't really pan out the way they expected. Quite the contrary happens as a result of this confrontation and Doyle has a change of perspective for his life. His use of the bomb is highly controversial in the Baki storyline itself and most characters do not approve of this technique. One of them, Katsumi Orochi, was a victim of this attack technique and wanted revenge for the permanent burn scar marks on his body. For the longest time, Hector Doyle only wanted to win and win at all costs. Hence, the chest bomb. But his storyline moves toward one of compassion and understanding that there is more to life than winning with bloodshed. But yeah, this transformation doesn't happen overnight. It takes a handful of instances of being overpowered by Katsumi and Retsu. After being overpowered by Katsumi, Hector Doyle throws in his shirt as a mark of respect and accepting defeat. While on the other hand, Doyle also shows his human side when he sees Retsu being mugged in the street, Doyle jumps in to rescue Retsu while he himself is bleeding out. Doyle then stays on the street watching over Retsu until morning. Finally, when Retsu feels better and he comes back to his senses, Doyle is on the verge of dying out of blood loss. Retsu is astonished by Doyle's kind-heartedness for watching over him when he was vulnerable during the previous night. Overcoming countless obstacles, Retsu pays his death by taking Doyle to the Shinsenkai Dojo to find him the right medical attention. This bromance really tells Doyle to change his ways, but not until he has settled the score with the Shinsenkai Dojo. Well, Doyle's idea of paying back his life's death to Shinsenkai Dojo was to explode the dojo, simply because 
because he isn't used to people doing him great favors like saving his life since he is essentially the bad guy. However, there is one person who is desperate to settle his score with Hector Doyle and he also happens to endorse the Shinsen Kai Dojo. You've guessed it right, as if Katsumi did not have enough reason to fight Doyle, he has a more serious provocation to put Doyle in his place. Yet this is the one last fight that also forces Doyle to reassess his life's decisions. By the end of this fight, Doyle and Katsumi choose to reconcile their differences and Katsumi arranges for Doyle to leave Japan and live a life out of crime, murder and arena fights. Hector Doyle chooses to give in to this life-changing prospect rather than resigning out of a sense of defeat. There is a huge difference between stepping back to evolve and stepping back to accept defeat. Hector Doyle chose the first one and for this, he is aptly called the kindest and most decent convict from the rest of the wolves in the Baki series. He follows a path of redemption over keeping up with the promise of his bloody potential as a fighter. That's a great character arc evolution and journey for Hector Doyle, the living weapon of the Baki series. How can Hector Doyle see things after being blinded and deafened? Will he come back? Post the completion of his evolution and the change of heart event, Hector Doyle is found hiding in a cave and trying to live out the rest of his life as a man of peace. Yet, it is like they say that what goes around comes around. Biscuit Olivia finally finds Doyle in his hiding place. Olivia was tasked with finding and apprehending the five escaped most evil death row convicts who arrived in Tokyo on the lookout to taste defeat. While it doesn't pan out as they planned, Doyle has a change of heart all thanks to Retsu and Kai. Katsumi. Their close encounters changed Doyle's perspective towards life and violence on the whole, but Biscuit Olivia had a major task at hand and that was to bring every escaped most evil death row convict back to the gallows, and that included Doyle. After tracing Doyle in his cave hideout, Olivia apprehended him and gave him a ruthless bear hug that broke Doyle's back. The damage isn't permanent though and Doyle is shipped off to a prison to serve his jail time. Thanks to Yanagi's poison hand, Doyle is already blind and has to rely on his sense of hearing and touch to figure out his way around the world. But but if this tragedy was not enough, Doyle starts to train his sensory faculties to the extreme. He willfully undertakes the task of deafening himself while he is in prison in the Revenge Tokyo storyline. The logic for this move is that Doyle wanted to train his body to solely rely on touch and lose his dependence on hearing. As he has already lost his eyesight, he believes that his superhuman sensory capabilities can still be trained to be his eyes. However, he doesn't just stop at training his senses. Hector Doyle chooses to discard his hearing and chisel his body's touch and sensational faculties. The result? Now, Doyle is so sensitive that he can sense the vibrations around him on his skin. Every movement, every small step or twist and turn of anything can be sensed by Doyle by merely sitting in his prison cell. So much so that he can catch a flying bat in his prison cell without moving a lot of his body. It is like Doyle has fine-tuned his body to touch the vibrations around him, to hear them and see the world around him. Well, sort of like the sonar system of the bats plaguing his prison cell? Not just close, but way more superior than the bats. Anime as a genre is known for its diverse range of characters, and the action genre is no stranger to employing characters with varying degrees of the good, the bad, and the ugly. A strong parallel can be drawn between Hector Doyle and the other major handicapped anime fighters, but our favorite pick is Gyome Himejima from Demon Slayer. As with the similarities, Doyle shares the central concept of seeing without his eyes, just like Gyome Himejima does. Gyome can do this with the use of his enhanced hearing and another ability called Sokitoro Sekai or See Through the World. Both these enhanced abilities typically allow Gyome to foreshadow an opponent's movements in their physical picture and create this image just by sensing the people and objects around Gyome. Gyome Himejima is blind but hasn't purposefully turned himself deaf to see better. But Hector Doyle, on the other hand, might have depraved two of his essential senses and yet he can do major seeing and watching with the help of his touch sensitivity alone. Instead of getting degraded, Doyle stands out as a more dangerous fighter. He needs to only hear things and he can even sense the vibrations around him. You can underestimate him to be blind, deaf, and a useless fighter, but this could prove to be highly fatal if you try to engage with Hector Doyle. Although this makes him a fearsome opponent for Baki to take him on with a rematch, it is highly unlikely that this will happen. Given the way Doyle's character arc has evolved, he is as good as retired, yet he is ironically stronger than ever. Doyle can see you coming from a mile away simply by sensing your arrival through his touch senses, and before you know it, he would have read your intentions through the vibrations of your body. Because let's not forget, Hector Doyle is the living weapon and an ace disguised wearer. Regardless of his current moral stand on fighting and crime, he can alter and sense every fishy move merely through the use of his body, and the rest, as they say, is history. 
Barbless Verdict. And the good old Barbless Verdict this time says don't mess with Hector Doyle because blind or not, Hector Doyle can sense almost anything and tear through multiple stories like he was climbing a dollhouse. Unless you wish to taste defeat like him and risk yourself getting blown to pieces with a chest bomb, we still would not recommend messing with him. A sentient and self-pretending automaton, there is no saying which moves Hector Doyle might pull on you and that makes him the most marvelous living weapon and assassin in the Baki canon. Good luck hiring him for any mission just in case you need to get the job done.